hello internet world. So we're here on Cherokee Street for the print gala, was it? Or yeah, print bazaar. Oh, for the print bazaar. And we're going to eat at Taqueria El Bronco. Um, and it's labeled authentic Mexican food. And I brought my friend Mary Grace along to join me. Hola. So we're in the restaurant and it, we got in really fast and got our seats. So now we're looking at the menu and there's a lot of things on it and I'll get back to you when I decide which one I want. So I want to take you a little bit more in depth about their menu, um, which is really interesting because as we were going through it earlier, we noticed how it was like a mixture of Spanish and English and there was no like rhyme or reason to it. It was just just a mixture that we picked up because we really sort of know Spanish. Um, and so like the front has um, their drinks um, and it's in Spanish, well, the title is in Spanish, and they highlight the differences between domestic and international beers, um, as well as having some, like, traditionally Latin American drinks, um, like aguas frescas and horchatas um, and tamarindo. Um, so I think, I think that's really interesting. Um, So, and it's also very interesting for me to see how they included a vegetarian menu um, because when I think of Latin America, I don't really think like vegetarian or vegan or any of the trends that we have um, in America that are trendy and cool that a lot of people adhere to. Um, so the fact that they put a vegetarian section on their menu was very telling of like, who their audience is and who is coming into the restaurant to try to taste like authentic Mexican food. Um, and they also have a lot of American options in their appetizers. So they have some French, they have French fries as part of their menu um, and hot wings, which is something that I would never expect from a restaurant that labels themselves as authentic Mexican food, um, which is really interesting. Um, that I found interesting was they have um, torta Hawaiian, which has ham, sausage, and pineapple. Um, and I'd never heard of that prior to coming here, so I thought it was very interesting. Um, Something else that was interesting on the menu is that on the back they have uh, what about to talk about they have like fish fillet breaded and um, something that I haven't hadn't heard of is what flautas is um, and so it sounds really interesting and I wish I had tried it um, but they also have when they're like naming their dishes, they're all very Americanized, like steak and shrimp or steak a la Mexicana to try to um, put something, uh, put an American twist, I guess, or to once again, like go sort of towards their customers um, because like I mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of people um, of Latin American descent who eat here, I guess. Um, so they're very much trying to cater to their customers and who's coming to eat at this restaurant. My favorite um, thing that they have is like they have the caldos y mariscos. Um, and it's funny because they don't really explain much.
much about what that is. Um, so it's interesting because their menu is very much geared towards the American who doesn't really know like Spanish or what a lot about Hispanic culture. Um, so it's interesting how they had this portion of their menu with no explanation um, because myself included as, for, as, a, as a first time like person at this Thank restaurant. You Thank you. Um, I didn't really know what this was and I had to look it up for myself. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. So we just ordered and I decided to get the lunch special with two chicken enchiladas with red sauce, which I hope is not spicy because I do not do well with spice. Um, which is another thing I like about this um, restaurant because they give us chips and salsa with, um, with some sauce and it's not spicy so I can actually eat it, so that's good. So Mary Grace, what did you decide to order today? I got a quesadilla with beef, and I got a side of rice. And did you get some guacamole? Yeah, I made sure it came with the guac. It came with guac, pico de gallo, so... I also got this Mexican apple soda, which I always ask for when I go to Hispanic restaurants. Uh, it is called Cidral Mundé, and it is apple flavored, and it is delicious. Would you recommend? Would recommend. So our food has arrived, and it was very quick. It only took about 10 minutes, and it looks delicious. Grace's quesadilla. I'm very excited. Oh no! the guac, I enjoyed the chips and salsa, I had a quesadilla and rice, those were good too, but I really just wanted to eat the chips and salsa and guac the whole time, so that's a good sign. Was it better than washu food? Yes, of course. It was very authentic. As you can see, I really enjoyed um, this food. So, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> um, for me, I really enjoy getting to eat any Mexican food that's not on Washu's campus and that doesn't taste like, I don't know, I don't know the best way to say this without being mean, but doesn't taste like too Americanized. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about what is authenticity and how we can determine what's authentic and what's not. Um, and uh, this restaurant has under their name outside, it's um, labeled as authentic Mexican food. And in the way that I view Mexican food as um, something that I would eat um, in California, um, which is definitely not the best way to judge authenticity, um, I think this was pretty authentic. Um, but I think that the fact that they're labeling themselves as authentic Mexican food has a lot to say about the location and sort of marketing um, because it is on Cherokee Street, which is like primarily known to be um, like where the Mexican food is and where Latin American culture is found. Um, which, although today I discovered that the other part of Cherokee Street is very gentrified and bougie um, but I think it is a way of marketing themselves as being um, authentic Mexican food um, and a, lo a lot of the server actually all the servers are Latin American descent um, I didn't get the chance to talk to any of the people who are cooking the actual food um, but I really enjoyed it and I think that by marketing themselves as authentic Mexican food, they're able to show what it means to, or not what it means, but they're able to show what authentic Mexican food is in the sense that it's food, cook, food cooked by Latin American people um, for like different people. As I'm looking around the restaurant right now, there's a lot of um, white people, African American people, 
people who aren't from or aren't don't have Latin descent. Um, and so it's really interesting how in this circumstance it's using authenticity in order to sort of convey and protect their culture in a way. Um, starting trying to fight like that colonial sense by taking their food, their culture, their cuisine and labeling it as their own and as authentic in order to combat that. Um, in, when we're in St. Louis where there's very little Latin American culture and culture in general, I would say. Um, so that's something that I really enjoyed about this restaurant. So one thing I want to talk about is the environment of the restaurant. Um, and I really enjoy how they do have some Christmas decorations up. Um, along with like the paper art um, and I think that's really interesting because it's the fusion of two different cultures um, which is great um, and it's very like, accommodating in here and like sort of homey and welcoming um, in a way in that once you enter you just they'll come and greet you and they bring you to your seat which is really nice um, especially because we just walked in here and we didn't know what to expect um, so that was very nice and although they do try to cater to their customers um, a lot of the te television that's on is they're playing like soccer right now um, and they're all they're on Spanish channels so when like they're talking or I'll bet you can't hear it but when they have commercials or anything it's all in Spanish so I think that's an interesting contradiction um, with trying to appeal to the consumer um, but still keeping to like tradition and sort of like what they're watching and it's soccer on the channel right now um, so I thought that was very interesting and just the art that they choose to decorate this restaurant with it just has a they're like Hispanic art I think and so that's interesting how they are trying to fuse two different cultures by being a Mexican restaurant in St. Louis, which is the middle of America, and by trying to keep to their traditions, but still sort of trying to bring people into their traditions and in doing so, teaching them about what is Mexican food, cuisine, like what is their culture, um, in a way that's accommodating for people in St. Louis who aren't really accustomed to that and so it's not very scary for them to come into this restaurant and try their food because it is it looks very Americanized in a way. All right so now I'm back in the comforts of my own dorm. We had to get out of there quick because we were sort of running late on the timeshare. Um, shout out to Mary Grace for going with me and letting me use her timeshare. Um, but I just wanted to film a few concluding thoughts that I had about vlogging in general and about my experience going to Taqueria Bronco um, and how I felt about the restaurant. So first, this was my first time vlogging um, in any way. So I hope this is bearable and watchable for you all. Um, and it was a fun experience, but a little awkward because it was open seating so people were staring as I was filming, but that's all right. And now about the restaurant, I was definitely getting Olvera Street vibes, which is a street in Los Angeles, sort of like Cherokee Street, where there are a bunch of Hispanic restaurants and um, there's like vendors and they're all dressed in traditional attire, um, which is quite a spectacle, but very fun to go and enjoy. Um, and I feel like the same thing is sort of here with Cherokee Street, 
especially with how the restaurant sort of portrayed itself in terms of the menu and how they decorated and some of the things on their item or some of the items on their menu um, so I thought that was very interesting and it comes it brings up an issue that I think about which is whether or not this performance is good or bad and I think that's a hard question to deal with um, but for me I tend to err on the side of um, it's good because it gives people who are say in the middle of the United States the ability to culture themselves and have a bit of that experience and being able to try Hispanic food. Overall, I really enjoyed this experience and getting to go and eat at Taqueria El Bronco and I would 10-10 recommend and I hope I can get back soon.